Hey guys, on today's show, we do an entrepreneurial pop quiz and we might even take a schwitz. Have you ever been interested in being on the show? If, if so, tag, comment, and share with a friend and maybe you'll be our next guest. Check it out right now. Hey guys, today Jason and I are going to be doing a little entrepreneurial pop quiz. We're gonna ask each other a couple questions. We don't know what the other person's questions are and we're gonna see what it, uh, what comes out. Yeah, we've done this format before and a good you know, a lot of audience likes it. If there's somebody who you think should watch this video, please tag them on any social platform. So we'd certainly appreciate it. This is how the community grows by social interaction, action, tagging, commenting, sharing, and things like that. Cool, so let's dive, in. let's dive into this. We each have three questions for each other. The other person does not know what the other person's questions are. Um, and it goes, it, it goes pretty nicely. So mm -hmm. if you want to start off, uh, feel start. free. You don't have to hide the questions, it's fine. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that, like no. playing <laughs> or something. Um, okay. Mine in over here. Jason, what is the best business advice you've been given? Well, that's first on this editorial question list. <laughs> um, that's a very easy, that's a very, very easy oh, question. Easy, okay. easy thing for me to answer. Stick to your wheelhouse. Stick to your core competencies. Stick to, I mean, number one, when you're defining a business, it, there's gotta be a few things. Obviously, is somebody already have that business so you know it's a viable business to begin with? Is it something that interests you? Is it something that you can see yourself growing with in the future? All different things like that. But mm -hmm. most importantly, um, most importantly, the advice related to it is, you know, is it something you want to see yourself doing? Is it something that you're able to do and it's something that you like doing and stick to your core competency and become great at it? The last thing you want to do is, I'm going to start this business, now I'm going to start this business, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do right. this. That, stick to right. stick to what you know and stick to what you like doing and stick to what you're good at and reach capacity, reach to the moon with it, grow, 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 grow. If you do happen to reach capacity with it or maybe just outgrow it and you just aren't interested anymore and you can figure out a way to put another operator in there to manage it on your behalf so you can work on other things that interest you, that's great. But you gotta, you gotta blow that up and you gotta stick to that and be motivated and ambitious about that every day. Good answer. I think cool. that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Um, okay. What is one thing that you're learning right now, and uh, and why and why do you think that it's important? You know, just something you're working on right now, either learning, either following somebody who, you know, has a specific skill set that you want to want to know about, um, and just something that you're devoting brain power to right now to educate yourself with and further okay. your career. So. For many years running our business, Jason and I have been, we're big marketing guys and still are. Um, starting back in the day with you know PPC and SEO and email marketing and sequencing and everything else. And we kind of switched over to being finance geeks, which we still are that as well. And I'm kind of thinking about going back to maybe you know sharpen the pencil a little bit in the marketing world with funnels and everything else. And I think that there's you know another uh, evolution, like you know, another level of how effective your online marketing can be using proper funnels and conversion stuff. So that's something I'm pay <clears throat> paying attention more to now, and something I'm going to put more effort into this year. Yeah, online and offline marketing. I mean, it, sure. it, it, online it, and offline. You know, as long as you know your metrics to get somebody in the front door, which could be just collecting a piece of data from them, it doesn't really matter. You know, as long as they're the target client, it doesn't really matter what makes them get there as long as you can get them there as long as you know financially you're getting them right there at the right price no doubt about that all right next question <clears throat> Jason what is one thing that keeps you focused one thing that keeps me focused I think all of this all of all of this around us we have a really good vibe um, oh, it, the atmosphere the community yeah. the community yeah. the the involvement um, you know we're involved with a lot of things related to real estate investing real estate investors um, other things related to real estate and owning properties and lending and things like that. And it's super easy to be focused on this when you come in here and you have like kind people grinding and motivated every day for the exact same cause. Um, meetup groups that we do that, you know, we're having in the hundreds of people that are hundreds of people, you know, comes hundreds of people that come to our, our meetups now. I mean, how powerful is that? Yeah. Is, you know, everyone's kind of in kind of in you know the, the same cause and you know they all want to be better real estate investors they all want to grow rental portfolios they all want to make more money 
you know, we all have very, very similar visions. Yes, they're tweaked slightly, but sure. it's a very easy for everyone to. It's very easy for everyone to just say focus together and you know follow the exact same thing. So that's kind of been, you know, it kind of just happens. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was a one-man operation working out of my house, it it would be uh, it would be more challenging. Oh, totally. um, but totally. if I was you know that, hey, well, I'm gonna try to grow this and be like other, you know, try to surround myself with other like kind people similar to me because that'll help me stay focused and, you know, expand. Good one. Um, what's the worst business opportunity that someone has ever pitched you? Oh my gosh. We get a lot of those. I mean, being in the private <laughs> capital business, we get opportunities all the time. I, I mean, a, a serious pitch or like a non, I mean. I mean, you could expand that too, because I'm gonna, talk about this afterwards because I'm I, I got one I got a, something similar to this that yeah. I want to bring up but you know just something that you know you've run across somebody who has a business or has a segment of their business that they spend a lot of time to and maybe you think about it, it's like you know what I don't know why this guy's spinning his wheels on this or girl because it just doesn't I just don't see you know the light at the end of the tunnel yeah I mean an easy answer for that being a private lending company is that we get spam basically all the time I mean whether people are just blasting stuff out or actually sending it like taking time and sending it directly to us trying to finance some crazy deal you know like thousands of acres in Arkansas for a billion dollars it's like are you really wasting your time on this fake deal even typing these letters but um, I mean yeah yeah I mean I think all, there's a lot that of that and I think there's a lot of that in the real estate space yeah. I think in the in the whole private capital world yeah there's a lot of these like just silly harebrained ideas that people are for some reason spending time on so I'd say all of those would count as the worst opportunity I've been pitched yeah and, and I and I would say to add that a little bit further no matter what industry you're in you know make sure whatever you're selling or whatever you're doing can be turned into a business opportunity and not just kind of a one-off product um, it's it's hard to sell one-off and then one-off and then one-off and one-off and have to do the exact same procedure, the exact same sales process, um, especially if it's like a low-end product, right? Over and over and over and over. And I mean, I'm not gonna bash like a mortgage broker, for instance, but the thing is, is I know good mortgage brokers and I know bad mortgage brokers, and the, sure. and the bad mortgage brokers, they're just chasing around every opportunity that they can get and trying to squeeze off whatever they can. And I know a lot of good mortgage brokers that are doing it, you know, they have better systems in place, they know what their niche is, they have a good name, they have good brand recognition, people are coming to them for certain things, and they're figuring out ways not just to make money on like fee-based, but they're, maybe they work themselves into like an equity position, or they bring in an investor and then they start doing like a joint venture with somebody. So think outside the box, think creatively. I mean, there's a lot of different opportunities out there. Good, good. All right, moving along. What is one thing you do to prevent burnout? <clears throat> um, okay, so that's actually got another easy question that uh, that you may not think. Um, what's the proper word? Maybe not the word diverse. Although I have a pretty diverse day, you know, I'm working on a lot of different activities. So transactional activities that we grind on, marketing activities, personal development activities, family activities, and things like that. So my entire day is kind of in is segmented. Variety. Yeah, segmented. Okay, variety is probably a better word than diverse, but. Yeah, I have a variety of activities that I'm working on. So it's not like one day I'm, I'm grinding, yeah, I'm not grinding six, eight, 10 hours on one particular thing. Now that may happen, you know, if we have a timeline of a, yeah. a software we have to implement or a timeline that we have to take care of or something, maybe you do that. But I feel like every day is very different. You know, on a broad level, we're doing marketing activities, transactional activities, we're doing this, we're doing that. Like there's a lot of different things that we're doing on a broad level, but each individual day, it's not like, okay, from, you know, I'm not doing the same kind of tedious activities over and over and over. And also being in the real estate invest, you know, real estate world, you see a lot of opportunities. You meet a lot of people, you meet a lot of business owners, you look at a lot of different properties, not every deal is the same. So that that's awesome. kind of like, I totally agree with that. so like that kind of, I guess that kind of just helps. Mm -hmm. No, I can, I can totally agree with that one. Um, cool. What is a best practice? Um, well, the question is, is how do you end your day? But what are some best practices that you try to follow when you, when you finish your day, when you end your day? Yeah, I mean, my evening routine is inconsistent like my morning routine is, but I do have certain good things in place. Like one, I used to read and maybe sometimes listen to podcasts about business at night 
and I stopped doing that because I was dreaming about it mm. and like <laughs> totally interrupting myself. So I stopped doing that. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I might read something golf related. I might just, you know, have a Netflix on or whatever it might be, but I don't like get that injection of business ideas right before sleep because that threw me off. Um, do, you, do you do anything that gets you ready at 6, 7 a.m., 8 a.m. the next morning to, I'm gonna start, you know, get you on like grind mode? Like almost stuff that you do that you're excited to wake up about. Yeah, and I've been inconsistent with that too. Like I've talked about meditation before, uh, doing that. Uh, this morning, for example, I went for a schwitz. When, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I went for a steam first thing in the morning and it was awesome in a shower. And like, if that were an easy thing to do, and the reason why I haven't done that in a month is because of the, the LASIK eye surgery and I couldn't do it for 30 days. And so on day 30, I was like, I'm going for a schwitz. <laughs> Great. Um, so that, I mean, so I, I dabble around with different stuff, but it just kind of stays, uh, I don't know. There's variety in both my morning and evening routines. Fair. Yeah. So if any, any of you watching have maybe an interesting question that you'd like to ask us, please ask away and we'll pick it up on the next time we do a, a topic like this. And, and again, we're really trying to keep everything very interactive, growing the community and things like that. So maybe there's there's a way that we'll do, I don't know, some, we'll, we'll bring a bunch of people that want to be on and mm. splice them into the video and we can ask each other questions that way. That there's there's certain, ten, you know, there's certain software companies and software services that does that, that do that. So we'll figure out a way to get this thing a little bit uh, more interactive, but most importantly, you got to tag somebody, you know, that you know that would be interested in this. You got to share it yourself because you know, we, that's how it grows. That's yeah. how things go viral. Share, tag, comment, like, subscribe, all the really good things in the, in the social and the interwebs world. I uh, hope you guys like this segment and we'll uh, check you guys again soon. Thanks again.